Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video I'm going to do a vacuum slash gravity bleed on my 2003 Jeep TJ. I recently did an LS swap and when I was doing that I had to replace a brake line. So the whole master cylinder and proportional valve has been drained in the front so I need to properly bleed it. Uh, I just added some fluid to the reservoir there. I got some extras and I'm going to start bleeding the brakes because the sooner I get these bled, the sooner I can get this thing mobile. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how not to bust off your bleeder screws. The first thing I'm going to do is spray down all the bleeder screws with this PB blaster and let it sit for pretty close to about an hour. So you can see one of the bleeder screws right there, identified hopefully by a rubber cap to help keep the dirt out. I'm going to take that cap off and then I'm going to spray it. You don't have to get crazy, just enough. So you can see right there, that looks pretty corroded. Let that settle in there. Once you got them all sprayed, I like to let them sit for at least a good hour, let it soak in a little bit, and hopefully we won't have any issues when the time comes. All right, now I'm gonna get ready to start bleeding. You want to check, make sure the master cylinder is topped up, plus have a little bit of oil nearby. And that is my vacuum bleeder right there that I'm going to do. Probably going to apply about five inches of vacuum. And then once you're bleeding, of course, you got to check and make sure that um, fluid stays in there because I had the proportional valve drain. That's why I'm going to do a vacuum bleed. And now one of the most important things when it comes to removing the bleeder screws is always bust them free with a socket. Don't try to use a wrench, especially an open end part of the wrench because you're going to end up stripping it off. Always use a ratchet to bust it free. Trust me. If you will thank me later because if you bust your bleeder screw off, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Now, of course, if you've never bled brakes before, you should always start from the furthest from the master cylinder, which will be the passenger rear, and then the driver rear, and then passenger front, and then driver's front. Now, this method only works if you don't have ABS brakes. Now, of course, with modern vehicles that have ABS brakes, this bleeding procedure will not work because a lot of times you need a high-end scanner to auto-bleed the... Um, any lock brakes so you got to be very careful on that this is this is just a straight brake system nothing fancy so let's get started put the socket on oh yeah we're good we're good so now that i broke it free it's tight right now but i'm just gonna put my my little rubber piece on there I'm going to take my wrench and I'm going to crack her open. It's going to be next to impossible to see, but I'm just loosening it up right there. I don't know if you can see the two, but it's starting to come down slowly. We're starting to come down now. You can see it. There we go. We're starting to bleed. So then, when you think you've bled off enough, just take that bleeder screw back up. Alright, round two. Now, of course, at any point in time, see that one's tight. That one's tight. I gotta be careful with this one. You don't wanna. Oh, there we go. You don't wanna do too much. See, this one's really tight, but I know it's coming out. There. It's already starting to leak out 
down there here. I can just grab my my thing there. That one was tight, but we got her. This one here is flowing a lot better. Didn't have to give it vacuum at all. Most likely because we already got the fluid flowing from the opposite side. That one is done. Let's tighten it up and move on to the next one. Same with the front one. I am going to crack it open. But I know I just had it open not too long ago, so I was going to throw that on there. Crack it open good. I already see some oil starting to come down, but... Gonna crack up some vacuum. There we go. It's taking a while. Then all of a sudden she burped. Now we got a good vacuum pull on there. You can see when you start pulling a vacuum. I need to get lots of air out of there. Now the beauty of doing a vacuum, you should hear it when I pull it off. Did you hear that? Yeah, we had some good vacuum going on there. One more to do. All right, last break to do. Driver's side front. And pulling that vacuum. Drained quite a bit of brake fluid. So you gotta top her up there. Let's get this last one over with. All right, this is it, last hole. Let's get on there. Oh, this one's... There we go, I cracked it. That brake line makes it really tight, but I just wanna throw my line on there, because now that I broke it free, I'm going to... You can see brake fluid's already coming down, but I'm going to give her about five inches of vacuum. And when I start giving her vacuum, you can see it's really starting to pull now. Hey, you see that? Really starting to come down the line. I mean, you can gravity bleed it. Just takes longer. But you pull the vacuum, start getting the oil through, and we're done. Let's tighten this one back up. Didn't take long at all. Not long at all. I'm gonna pump in some more vacuum. And when I pull it off, yes. Start it up. Because I should have brakes now. And not have the pedal drop to the floor. Nice and tight now. Yes, sir. We got some brakes. Well, there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this short video of doing a gravity slash vacuum bleed. Sometimes you can get away with doing a gravity bleed. It does take a lot longer. If you have a vacuum pump or attachment, that can make it go a lot quicker because once you start pulling that vacuum, it'll start sucking that fluid down and you don't need two people to do this job. Brakes are good. Pump them up really hard now where before right to the floor, right to the floor. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, post them below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.